Welcome back. We are back at it again with episode two. In our last episode, we defined diet culture, weight stigma, and weight cycling, and we saw how these systems negatively affect our health. But where does diet culture come from? How long has diet culture been around? In this episode, we dive deep into the history of beauty standards. So welcome to Change Series 4, Body Image, where we try to find out where we got our body image so messed up. So here we go. It appears that as humans, we have a long history with trying to alter our appearance and bodies. Now, these alterations are often in line with the beauty standards of that time. And beauty standards are the individual qualifications that are focused mainly on, but not only, women and femme presenting people who are expected to meet these standards to embody the beauty ideal and thus be successful personally and professionally. Now, when dieting is a component of this beauty ideal, again, the pressure is heavier on women and femme presenting folks to shrink themselves, to take up less space and to make themselves smaller for the world around them. Now, these beauty standards have changed over time. In ancient Egypt, the standard of beauty was being slender, with narrow shoulders, a high waist, and a symmetrical face. While in the Han Dynasty, it was about having large eyes and small feet. In the 1950s, thinness became the thing again. To the supermodel era of the 80s, where athletic, curvy body types became a thing. To what was referred as heroin chic in the 90s, where being extremely thin became the ideal again. Right now, the ideal is a flat belly with large breast and a butt with a slight thigh gap. Now, no matter the standards of beauty, it seems to be an unwritten, unfair set of expectations that are placed on individuals. Unfair because this stuff is based off of some influential individuals who might be the way they are because of their genetics or other reasons and not necessarily because of their life choices. While beauty standards have always been unfair, in recent years, our exposure to those standards has increased massively. Let us explain. Not so long ago, the standard was the exception, right? You might have one person in your classes that fit this beauty ideal, or maybe a few people in your community, but our view is more objective. Most people don't have the genetics to fit into this narrow standard of beauty. But in this time, with TV and commercials and especially social media, it can seem like everybody has this desired beauty. As we scroll through our feeds, we can see perfect body after perfect body after perfect body. And we can start to think that everyone has a perfect body. And then there's us. And these times, the exception has become the standard. This all results in 20% of adults feel shame, 34% feel down and low, and 19% felt disgust over their body image within the past year. And a higher body dissatisfaction is associated with poor quality of life, physiological distress, and the development of unhealthy eating behaviors and eating disorders. Um, so growing up, I was a chubby kid and it wasn't until I got into like high school where I was exposed to say like one or two, um, you know, like great looking people and you're going through puberty and that's when things started to shift in my awareness of um, body image. I just didn't understand like why I was you know, a little bit chubbier and I didn't look like that popular girl. And so rather than investigating, um, I guess, and learning about nutrition and health um, at that age, I just thought to myself, like, if I didn't eat, um, then I wouldn't put on more weight and I would lose weight. And so there would be like, days where I wouldn't, um, I guess, eat a lot. I would just uh, like chew chewing gum and, you know, and you would talk to your friends and they'd be like, oh yeah, I've, I haven't eaten anything today. And it was almost like, like you were proud that you hadn't eaten anything, um, despite the fact that you couldn't concentrate um, and you were hungry and it made you tired and um, 
Yeah, or basically all the side effects of not eating. Here are some ideas on how to better your body image. Start with your social media. Scroll your feed. What do you notice? And then ask yourself, how does my feed make me feel? Is it sending me messages that my body is not good enough? What would happen if you unfollow these accounts that create these feelings for you? Try and change your feed and I want you to observe how you feel over the next week. And if certain accounts make you feel good and they build you up, follow them and keep them in rotation. The other accounts that tear you down and make you feel like you're not good enough, I want you to unfollow them and say goodbye and go live your life in peace. So we've made another step in finding out why our body image is so messed up. But keep watching because in the next episode, we are going to address body size and health. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again real soon.